S&P 500 and slash TF, which is the small cap 2000. I'm going to start here on slash ES. And I uh, usually like always starting on the, uh, the four hour chart. Let's go ahead and take a peek at this ugly, ugly uh, four hour chart. You'll kind of see what I mean by ugly. But this is a pretty, pretty darn ugly four hour chart, if I might say so. Probably the ugliest we've seen in a while. And so, um, looking here at uh, slash ES, and uh, here's where I mean this four hour chart. And when I say ugly, let's just go ahead and, and bring this transformer up and um, look. Look at how messy and messy, messy this is. Usually it's pretty smooth. Usually this sucker will move down, it'll move up, it'll move down, it'll move up. And this thing is just stuck. Right here in the middle, we've gotten a down arrow, we got up arrows, we got down arrows, we got up arrows. It's very, very ugly. So our four hour chart doesn't help us very much. It, basically, what the four hour chart tells us is just better watch yourself because bulls and bears are, are extremely, extremely battling right now which they are, I mean, even just in a global economy, you can see that the bulls and bears are battling really, really hard. And so as far as like going in, you don't, <clears throat> when you look at the uh, the year of 2015, it's pretty much dead even. I mean, prices really from January 1 to today, prices really haven't gone anywhere. And so these bears and these bulls are still battling hard, trying to decide who's going to win for the year. Is it going to be a bear year? Or is it going to be a bull year? And the, and it's honestly, I, I have no idea. It's all going to come down to the end of this week, and it's all going to come down to the, uh, the Fed announcement here in December. It's where it's all going to come down to. Okay, but I'm just trying to figure out some day trades that I can make. Okay, so when I look at this four-hour chart, obviously it looks a tad bullish. Right? I mean, it does look like uh, price, you know, caught a little bit of it here, and you can, you'll notice when we move to the one-hour chart, the one-hour chart is moving a lot, lot smoother. But it's, uh, it's, it's a tough gig when your four-hour chart goes from uh, green to red to green to red, green to red. Right? That's tough. Normally, you want your four-hour chart to stay green, red, green, red, green, red. But this one is, look, I mean, it's tough. Even when your hiking ashy candles are going from green to red, so our four-hour chart is telling us basically um, we got nothing for you. Basically, is what the four-hour chart is telling me. And so one thing that I do know is that our 2100, we still got to remember the 2100 magnet. It's the largest magnet that I've ever seen in a, in a market before. Okay, so we got the 2100 magnet that we have to have to be ready for. Because uh, that, that they could run it, want to run this up to 2100 at any in any any day now, and then um, we do still have the resistance. We'll call it 2096 to 2098, and then to the downside, we'll call that uh, 2080 to 2078 to the downside. So we got uh, Kilner channels up to the downside. I wrote those wrote those down. Here's our one hour chart. Here's the chart that's actually moving pretty decent here. So when you look at our one hour chart, we, we did actually catch a really, really good uh, one hour sell trigger. Pretty much the entire day was a one hour sell trigger. And then actually this Asian session, um, we're catching a beauty one hour buy trigger during this Asian session. Look at this. I mean, price has already moved up about 12 points. So it's actually moving. Look at that buy trigger. I mean, if you want to know what buy trigger looks like, there's your reversal star. Everything's telling you to buy, and then we're off to the races. This isn't easy, right? Sell high and then buy low. Very, very, too many people. Um, very, very simple. Okay. So when we look now, um, this is, I mean, the one hour chart, it looks like when we move up to the upside, we just wrote the 2096 to 2098 level as a uh, resistance which is pretty much exactly the resistance line pretty darn close to the resistance line on the one hour chart as well to the downside these Kel these keltners are actually matching up on the one hour and the four hour so from 2081 to 2079 which is exactly where the four hour chart is too so we are we have a really good a pretty decent range to trade tomorrow as long as it stays range bound so now when we look to our five 15 minute chart, 
plot chart. We got the five day low here, we got the five day high here, and uh, we're basically just in the middle of those, right? So um, we're not necessarily extremely overbought, we're not necessarily extremely oversold either. So it's, in my opinion, it's a tougher market to trade um, when you're not one of two of those. It's pretty, very, very, very simple when you're oversold. You just look for your buy triggers. Very, very easy when you're overbought. You look for your sell triggers. But now, we're just stuck in the middle, so now we just need to be cautious on everything we do because at any moment of the day, the bears and the bulls are going to wrestle this chart away. Currently, nobody's in control of this chart. We have no idea. If I were to say, I'd say the bears are. But um, longer term, the bulls are, so it, it's tough. But you can kind of see why I would say the bears, right? Here's your bear channel. That's kind of why I say the bears are in control of this chart for now. But we that, that could absolutely, absolutely change by uh, open market open or by uh, lunchtime so you just got to be careful so when I look at this chart notice here during Asian session we had a huge pop up 12 point pop during Asian session is pretty big so we've had a pretty nice pop all the way up to the plus 0.5 so looking at this the first thing that I see obviously is a buy trigger right there on value a high which is also Wednesday's POC November 23rd and uh, November 23rd POC. So you have three things telling you for a buy trigger uh, right there. So that's going to be the first thing that I'll be looking for. And then, of course, if this is important, if this bust through catches a lower high and a lower high, there's your first take profit on settlement in Tuesday's POC. Okay, because here's the deal. You either got a buy trigger here and you enter on a one minute higher low. Or it breaks and you enter on a one minute lower high, lower high. Take your profits right there if you're going to try a spread trade. And then if that busts through, enter on another lower high once you get through settlement in Tuesday's POC. And then take your profits right there. That's exactly where the one hour Keltner is, is down here. Four hour Keltner is down here. And it's exactly value area low. It's Friday's POC, and it's exactly where the bears took it here. Not rocket science. So that's my plan uh, to the downside. You pretty much only have uh, one, two, you got three trades to make, and then I'm not really looking for buy trades there tomorrow, maybe. But honestly, price comes down here. You should have made plenty of money on the way down, okay? To the upside now, obviously, I want to try and, and st stick to this as far as being a seller um, since we've already made our move up to this plus 0.5 here's our here's our channel right there I mean we're pretty much right at uh, the tip of this channel I mean we should be selling off right now so that's something that we need to be watching for here in London session is this this should come back down right that's why I'm not gonna trade in London session just because um, we'll let, I'm gonna let this do its thing I'll come in during the US session and uh, trade the reaction. I'm not going to try and predict. But this should, just looking at this channel here, this should come down. And so here's the big thing though. Let's draw our channel. And if this doesn't and breaks and holds pullbacks, you can probably imagine where we're going. We're probably running to the 2100. Okay. I don't know if we'll make it there tomorrow, but here's but here's my here's my deal. 2096 to 2098 is our resistance Keltner to the upside but we also have the 2100 magnet for the bulls so here are bears and then here is where the bulls want to go so this is really really tough for me this area up in the chart is a huge huge question mark for me because I'm not exactly sure what to do because of the 2100 magnet but then we also have all of this resistance here but it's like are the bulls gonna say forget resistance and go run up to the 2100 and then I gotta stop loss my trades or are they going to hold resistance and then hold, right? So it's it's really tough. I don't have a very good plan. If we basically, I want this to try one more time and fail, and then I can look for my sell trades right here, maybe even right around here, this 295 level. But I don't want to get through plus 0.5, hold a pullback there and hold a pullback there, and you're looking to sell this chart. It'll be difficult. So basically, I want to make sure that. I catch my sell trigger here or here 
we come back through and I'm entering on my one minute lower highs and uh, I'm taking this all the way back down to here I can look for a buy trigger there or get through and then maybe we tanksville for an 80% roll so I apologize that this is just a little bit of a vague plan I get it but uh, you got to realize that we're stuck in the middle this isn't the easiest chart to trade tomorrow we're just gonna have to kind of figure out this chart's gonna we're just gonna have to figure out um, probably trade smaller tomorrow in my opinion I wouldn't try to you know make your entire gains tomorrow um, and then and then let this chart come to you so could we quickly go look at the TF it's a little bit better okay TF's a little bit better why because we are overbought right we, we have a clear definition of overbought right we're not in the middle we're not here we're overbought basically it's plain and simple right so we caught the four hour sell trigger and then it is kind of coming back it come came all the way back down to the middle blue Keltner which is pretty much exactly where I told you it was gonna go middle blue Keltner it then caught a one hour buy trigger okay so there's your one hour sell trigger there's your one hour buy trigger to the upside and then now their one hour chart we got resistance up to the 1204 to 1206 let's write that number down So I do kind of want this to come up a little bit higher so that I can smack this back down. And so this level right here, let's use um, 1197 to 1194. We'll use 1197 to 1195. Okay, so that's the uh, that's where prices are have, are light are wanting to go. It's where they went on Friday. It's where they went again on Monday, and then our resistance here. So look at this range. I mean, this is a pretty pretty nice range here here and here let's keep trading this until proven otherwise so now we move over to the plot chart and um, you can kind of clearly clearly defined you can clearly defined so you can see our range I won't mind if this comes up to the plus 0.5 I can look for my sell triggers there um, also this has perfect potential um, would we just write down 1197 to 1195 which you're probably thinking what I'm thinking 80% rules to the downside tomorrow something that we'll be looking for is that I'll be looking for as well so this chart probably does look a little bit better um, I don't have a very good plan if we break plus 0.5 because this is our five-day high okay don't forget this is our five-day high and I want this to try one more time and I can look for sell triggers there and then I can also look for sell triggers here and then try and take this to value very low. Okay, so for an 80% bull. So this chart's a little bit better. Honestly, I'm not too pumped up for tomorrow's charts. They don't look amazing, but I will be I'll be up a little early to try and see what I can get. Comment if you have any questions.